wasn't surprised to see that it was raining. It seemed like these days is all that the sky was good for. It had a weird effect on you. After a while, all the nights ran together, one long string like notes on an alto sax. But this night was different. This night was gonna bring me some answers. But looking back, I should have known that some mysteries are better left unsolved. Came to this place like most other people do. My friends told me it was a fun spot to kill a couple of hours. Dripping with cool and style despair, they've said. Well, they were right on that front. That first two hours flew by like a Learjet. All I remember were some pretty pictures and snappy one-liners. You only remember so many things when you get busy in the dark. wait for something more to come and before I knew it a couple hours became a couple weeks then a couple months and then the better part of ten years ten years and all I had to show for it were a few less hairs a few extra pounds none of them were muscle that morning I received the envelope, unsigned, unmarked, slipped beneath the door. Come to Silver City, it said. You'll find what you're looking for. Sure, it could have been a trap, could have been a sting, could have been a practical joke, but it was a lead, and it's not like I had anything better to do. walked into the Silver City. A place like this used to be something. Way back when the carpet smelled new and the rails still had the shine. Now it was just another last ditch depot on the way to the bargain bin. The smell of burnt popcorn hanging in the air like Agent Orange. A pimply faced clerk flashed me a smile that would have a dentist seeing dollar signs. Flashed the note up and raised an eyebrow. He shifted. Like he was afraid of what he was getting me into. Twelve bucks, he said under his breath, and slid me a ticket, pointing to a large double door. I pushed it open. I found a dark room full of sticky chairs in front of a big blank screen. I sat down and lit a cigarette. The first drag gave me a ten minute coughing fit. The second made me puke cheap bourbon all over my shoes. By the third, I remembered that I didn't smoke. I was about to guess that Liam Neeson didn't do voice work in Guardians of the Galaxy when the lights dimmed. It was showtime. Pictures looked exactly like they did all those years ago. All sleek monochrome and hot jazz. Something was off, like a junior jumble with the missing circle. Nothing made sense. The more I tried to put it together, the more confused I got. The plot was clear as mud, and the picture was as overcast as an English Sunday. My head started swimming, like Michael Phelps on a four-day speedbender. And I only ended up treading water. All the latex, sass, and bullets just boiled down into a consomme that needed more salt. Maybe it's true that you can't go home again. Maybe it's true that it wasn't ever your home in the first place. 
I sat in the dark for what felt like hours, hoping to whatever us lowlifes called God that an answer would come. The rosebud at the heart of this black mystery. Then, lit up on screen like a technicolor Christmas tree, the magic words appeared. Written and directed by Frank Miller. Suddenly, everything clicked into place like a spring-loaded jigsaw. Miller. Way back when, he used to be somebody in this town. Bright young kid on the up and up. His name was in every paper, and it seemed they couldn't praise him enough. Just like Lucifer, the brightest stars burn out the hardest. It started slowly, little peaks at the poison core beneath the apple. Cavalier attitude towards violence, tongue-in-cheek misogyny, the kind of dumb kid stuff you hope a man will grow out of. But then he unleashed his own brand of holy terror on the world, and there was no going back. We saw the man behind the curtain, and it terrified us. Miller fled the city soon after, aside from gin joint rumors and a fearful glance out of the corner of your eye, it looked like he was gone for good. Well, now I knew better. It was only a question of if I was too late to warn the others. I stumbled out of the theater, half blind in the light, I ran for the door like it was the last train out of Paris, and I pulled the handle with all I had. It was locked. And then, I heard the voice behind me. Well, well. Did you enjoy the show? I turned around and there he was. The years weren't kind. His boyish smile had melted into a cruel sneer. Despite his dumb fedora, his reptilian eyes blinked out like a lighthouse in the fog. For a brief, terrifying moment, those eyes met mine and I felt myself wither. Miller, you yellow bastard. You've gone totally mad. They'll never let you get away with this. He smirked again and waved his hand. Nonsense. For you see, I already have. And I owe it all to a little discovery that I made in my time away. We all pretend to be high-minded, god-fearing, hero-worshipping cogs in the machine of polite society. But at the end of the day, when the moon comes up and the chips are down, we are nothing more than beasts. We'll take the shiny object over the prettiest sonnet any old day of the week. I somehow found the energy to respond. Words stumbled out like a hobbled runner with too much wine in his gut. No, Miller. You're wrong. Sure, we don't always want to use our brains. But there's no way in hell that the people are going to accept this garbage. He smirked again. Well, I guess we'll see. Won't we? I felt the gunshot a split second before I heard it. A warm puddle creeped across my chest and down my legs, and my whole body felt like it was made out of sand. I tried to reach for his neck, only to fall forward, down into a darkness so deep that no light could ever crawl out. As the smell of cordite filled my head and my eyes grew heavy, the last thing I heard was that yellow bastard laughing. So that's my story. Not a lot you can do to change the world when you've lost your physical body. But I still got a mouth and the mind to use it. I'll use every last ounce of breath I got to warn any each and every person out there not to make the same mistake I did. Sure, it may seem like a fun way to kill some time. Maybe you got a friend willing to take you, or a couple bucks burning a hole in your pocket. Trust me. Nobody ever comes back from Silver City. <laughs>